What's up everyone, Dr. Jacob Wilson here. We're super pumped up today because we're talking about growth hormone. Now last time we talked about anabolic steroids, but now we're talking about what happens if you take growth hormone, okay? Now once again, make sure you consult your doctor. I'm not here recommending to take anything. I'm just saying what occurs in the course that you consume or you take injectable growth hormone. Okay, so what is growth hormone? Let's talk about it in general, okay? So you look at your brain and you basically have this gland that's called a pituitary gland, okay? Growth hormone gets released from the anterior pituitary gland. It then goes to the liver and it tells the liver release IGF-1 or insulin-like growth factor one. Now, a lot of bodybuilders know about IGF-1. IGF-1 is anabolic, okay? The thought is that it makes us grow. IGF-1 circles around in the blood and then it goes to the muscle and the theory is it makes the muscle grow, okay? So for this reason, bodybuilders will take growth hormone. Okay, now, scientists began to look at growth hormone and they said, what happens if you inject growth hormone? Let's look at muscle protein synthesis, okay? Muscle protein synthesis is short-term increases in muscle growth, okay, very short. It's like, imagine that you take a bodybuilder and you watch them grow over 12 weeks time and all I did was take a snapshot picture. How much would I be able to cut, look at growth? It's gonna be very difficult to capture growth of that snapshot picture, but that's what they do in the studies, okay? Now, when you take that picture, you look at the muscle itself didn't increase in protein synthesis when you gave growth hormone. Now, I need to back up for a second here. In the laboratory, there are numerous what we call isoforms or forms of growth hormone. Okay, there's well over 20. Only one gets studied, and it's the one that most bodybuilders take. There are a lot of growth hormone derivatives that bodybuilders don't take, which is very interesting because if you look at anabolic steroids, there's not just one derivative testosterone bodybuilders take. They take numerous, whereas with growth hormone, they just take one, right? But in the lab, there's numerous. So I'm just talking about just one. It's the main one that people take. Okay, it's called somatotrophin. Let's talk about this for a second. Oh, wow, in the lab, they find it doesn't increase protein synthesis. Therefore, scientists conclude growth hormone has no effect on muscle growth. Well, I'm gonna tell you this right now, that's false, okay? Uh, I was just talking to Charlie, um, who you guys know. Basically, he made a really good analogy. And what did he say? He said that like growth hormone's almost like a gym membership. Just because of a gym membership, if you don't use it, you're not gonna grow. You don't grow because I have a membership, okay? Same thing with growth hormone, all right? What does growth hormone do? It's because it doesn't directly stimulate protein synthesis, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't make you grow. Why? Number one, connective tissue, the thing that surrounds muscle, the thing that supports muscle, the thing that prevents us from getting injured, the thing that makes our tendons stronger, growth hormone does increase protein synthesis in. Now, last I checked, if you're taking something that is an ergogenic aid that's gonna make you grow in a non-natural way, you don't think your tendons are gonna be overstressed? You don't think that you're gonna be at a greater risk for injury? Because the answer is you are. If your bench press goes up 50 pounds in a very short period of time, what do you think is gonna be in danger of happening? Injury, okay? actually something that you might have have reconstructive surgery on because you had a tear and a tendon, okay? So in that case, growth hormone is very important, but even if you weren't taking uh, anabolic steroids, um, connective tissue is what goes. Think about this for a second. When you've been training, like I see a lot of guys who are 18, 19, lifting with no form, and they're getting a lot of size gains, they're like whatever. When they get in their 30s and 40s, and it's hard to get up out of the chair because their knees are so swollen and it's hard to drive because they have so much tendonitis in their biceps, now it's a problem, okay? Now it's not simply about how much can you grow, it's about how healthy can I stay so I can go to the gym and actually lift. It's because I don't wanna have to do 20 sets with the bar with no weight on it just so I lubricated my joints enough so I'm not in so much pain so I can actually lift 135, okay? That's the point. What does growth hormone do? It lowers that inflammation, it repairs the connective tissue, okay? So you can recover faster, okay? 
Growth hormone gives us more energy so we can train harder. Growth hormone makes us have deeper, more positive sleep so I can recover faster from my workouts, okay? It allows me to train more frequently. All of those things directly contribute to the things that help me elevate muscle protein synthesis, which is training really hard. The other thing that growth hormone does is that there's a concept called nutrient partitioning. What do I mean? Nutrient partitioning means that you can partition nutrients away from fat and toward muscle, meaning that growth hormone makes it harder to store body fat. What does that do? It means I can up my calories. And upping calories, or go, go right now, stand in your kitchen. You're one of the most anabolic environments you possibly can be in. If you can up your calories and not gain as much fat, growth hormone becomes very anabolic. Okay, now, bodybuilders take this at different dosages. When you're talking about therapeutic dosages, for the guy who's just been training there in their 40s and they have a bunch of damage and they're sore, that's like one to two IUs. Where bodybuilders go to extreme is where they take six, seven, 10 IUs of growth hormone, sometimes 12 IUs of growth hormone. In that case, a lot of the side effects come into play where you have swelling, numbness in your fingers. That's where you have the um, bodybuilder on stage and they're shredded, but they have a gut out to here. Why? Because growth hormone also causes growth in internal organs, okay? And so if you have hypertrophy in internal organs, you're on stage and you have abs, but your gut looks like a balloon. Taking that still further, remember insulin can make us fat, but if you're taking it with growth hormone, it's gonna prevent a lot of that. So a lot of times, bodybuilders will take growth hormone with insulin and then of course you're monitoring yourself every second because insulin can make you boom drop to the floor of blood glucose and go into um, a coma and die right so just realize that like that extreme world uh, there's problems like again people holding water having huge guts uh, out on stage and that has changed the sport a lot from like the 70s and the early 80s to where during the, the 90s, bodybuilders kind of exploded, um, getting up to 300, 330 pounds in the off season, but getting those huge guts on stage. So just realize that there are side effects that come into play and there are the more therapeutic benefits at like one to two I use, and then there's the um, side effects that come along with the larger doses of, of growth hormone. So. Um, guys, again, this is not telling you, I'm not recommending anything. I'm just telling you this is the outcome um, that happens with, with, with taking growth hormone. There's positive effects, there's negative effects. Thank you so much. I will see you next time.